Hey guys, with patch 9.1 well underway and players finally reaching full levels of gear, we're getting ready to see the meta become fully established. While our latest tier list was done prior to the season even starting, it was very clear which specs would go into the season looking strong. But the gear levels and of course the meta developing has still shaken things up a bit, so we got together and discussed with our rank 1 consultants in order to bring you this ranged 9.1 tier list update. Also, if you're looking to increase your rating this season, be sure to check us out at skillcap.com slash wow. Over the years, we have seen people go from challenger to gladiator, all by implementing the lessons we teach in our videos. In fact, we are so confident in your results that we're the only service to offer a money back guarantee. Our class courses teach you the fundamentals you need to master your class in PvP, and we have hundreds of exclusive commentaries featuring matchup breakdowns directly from the best players in the world. You'll also gain premium access in our Discord server, where our team of pros respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you're truly serious about improving. Alright then, to kick things off, we're going to be starting with our lowest tier of C. These specs are definitely two of the weakest specs in Arena currently, almost having no representation, and for very good reason. First, we've got Marksmanship Hunter. Coming into the patch, we predicted Marksmen to not do too well, placing them into our lowest tier based on patch notes, and nothing since then has really changed. Marksman's biggest issue is that it lacks any real sustained damage output, which is fair enough as it's supposed to be the more burst oriented spec for hunters. But with most of the damage being physical, you really do struggle against high armored targets like warriors for example, and if you've played any arena lately, you'll know just how often you see cleaves and especially warriors. With that being said though, against casters, marksmen can do some ridiculously high upfront damage. Sadly though, the meta currently just doesn't allow marksmen to perform. Plus, come on, are you ever really going to go Marksman when Beast Mastery is as strong as it currently is? Keeping Marksman company in our lowest tier, we've got our next edition of Arcane Mage. Arcane received some nice changes coming into the season with Kleptomania being removed from both Fire and Frost and being made specific to Arcane, as well as the brand new talent Arcanosphere, which can do some ridiculous damage if left unnoticed. But this, as expected, wasn't enough to push them out of our lowest tier. Arcane just has so many issues, especially when compared to both of the other mage specs. One of the glaring issues Arcane suffers with is having both your damage and crowd control tied to one school of magic. Coupled with that, Arcane suffers with a lack of instant damage, so not only do you have to cast way more than the other specs, you've only got the one school of magic to do it on. But who knows, maybe in 9.1.5, we'll see the Arcane dream become a reality. Okay, so that's our lowest tier complete. Now we're going to be jumping up one into our B tier in which our first edition is going to be Frost Mages. Frost looked quite hopeful at the start of the season with some very cool additions like Ice Wall. Frost's main niche has always been when playing with other casters, allowing them to act almost as a support, controlling the pace of the game and making enemies life a misery with all of the added slows and roots. What Frost suffers from though is lack of any real impactful instant damage, and while it can do some decent damage if left to free cast with flurry procs and frost bolts, it's just way too reliant on hard casting, making Frost almost have to pair up with another caster. But in our current metagame, it's very rare you see caster compositions period, and with Frost being reliant on another caster in order to perform like mentioned, unless we see some pretty big changes to classes like Warlock, sadly Frost will continue to lack any standout compositions and remain inside of our B tier. Joining Frost inside of our B tier, we've got Destruction Warlocks. Destruction, alongside all Warlock specs for that matter, are just not having the best of seasons. We're seeing a few Destruction Warlocks doing well in caster compositions, or even with a Feral, but are very rare. Destruction is just lacking when it comes to 3v3 in specific. You're not as scary as you once were, nor as durable, meaning most other meta classes and specs are able to just run you over while locking down Chaos Bolts. The strength of certain melee specs is also not helping Destruction's case. You're required to stand still and cast, but doing so means you're often at the losing end of that trade. Plus, with how reliant you are on cooldowns like Dark Soul and even your Infernal, it opens up a lot of counterplay. The immobile turrets that once were are no longer the scariest thing in the arena, leaving Destruction in our B tier. To further add to our B tier, we've got another Warlock spec, this time though it's Affliction. Affliction is capable of doing some of, if not the highest damage inside of Arena, and for the most part it's all instant, not to mention we've even seen Affliction being pioneered inside of the AWC. So what's stopping it climbing higher on our tier list? 
Well, Affliction is just way too weak defensively in order to exist in the current meta and requires way too much on kiting in order to survive, which isn't helped by additions like Spear of Bastion or Keeper's Sky Reach, allowing enemies to have very impactful uptime. And even then, although they deal big numbers on the damage meter, they lack any real finishing power outside of their easy to counter Dark Soul. To put it simply, it's not so much Affliction being bad, it's more so other classes having way too many tools to reliably deal with them. Which leaves our final spec finding itself in our B tier yet again, another Warlock spec, this time Demonology. Demonology is quite frankly by design a spec that has no place inside of Arena with its current iteration. Having a spec which is required to consistently cast in order to build up telegraph damage can never really perform too well in the meta. That being said, the adaptation of swapping their Chosen Covenant to Necrolord for Decimating Bolt and picking up the new Shard of Annihilation Legendary has bred new life into Demonology, allowing it to push out of our lowest tier and actually see some play at higher ratings. Although their damage is very telegraphed, it's so high that if enemies are unaware or you set it up well with your multitude of stuns, you can two-shot players with ridiculously hard-hitting Demon Bolts. And that's going to wrap up Warlock's stacked B tier. Honestly, there isn't much between any of the three specs. It's more so composition and playstyle dependent. Although we have seen Warlocks have the biggest success still with Affliction. Moving up now, we're going to be taking a look at our penultimate tier of A. Dropping down from our predicted rank of S tier, we've got Elemental Shamans. Elemental looked very promising going into the season with some much needed changes to their Flame Shock, now receiving some actual Dispel Protection. Although stronger in theory, this wasn't right in practice, not so much because of Elemental as a spec, but more so as a result of the meta. Elemental is very strong against classes where they can avoid damage, for example Caster Cleaves, where it's weak is compositions where it can't avoid damage, and with specs like Arms Warriors, Windwalkers, and Ferals being so dominant, as well as compositions like Jungle Cleave and Rogue Mage, a lot of the things Elemental struggles into are just the meta right now. So if we do see any shifts in the metagame, maybe in the direction of being more caster dominant, Elemental has all the tools to easily climb back into our S tier. The next spec finding itself inside of our A tier is Balance Druid. Balance has had a lot of ups and downs, resulting in a lot of experimenting and seriously, no one was really sure what covenant, legendary, or even spec to play. Finally though, Balance Druid players have solved the equation, opting to go the Kyrian Covenant with the recently added Kindred Affinity Legendary. This legendary allows them to piggyback of the strength of the Necrolord Covenant, gaining a huge 8% permanent versatility for both themselves and their partner, which even doubles during Kindred Empowerment. This makes them able to team up with specs like Windwalker Monks, Necrolord Warriors, or even Shadow Priests and Elementals to a lesser extent, taking the role of essentially a support class, bringing instant crowd control and on-demand damage every minute. Okay then guys, that brings us to our final and highest tier of S. Our first spec finding itself in our highest rank probably won't take anybody by surprise, and that's Beast Mastery Hunter. Beast Mastery dominated the ladders at the end of Season 1 and have only gone on to get stronger this season with additions like Wild Kingdom and Chimeral Sting. This spec just has it all though. You've got some of the highest sustained damage output from any class combined with bursts coming from the RNG factor of Flayed Shot. This coupled with the instant crowd control of Freezing Trap and Intimidation Stun just make them very overwhelming to play against and then even defensively can only find themselves in danger against a select few compositions as the Craven Stratagem Legendary when against certain classes makes Beast Mastery unpunishable. That being said, in 3v3, we have only really seen Beast Mastery have success with their popular composition of Jungle Cleave, so if some tuning happens to any of the three specs involved, we could see Beast Mastery Hunters only sticking in 2v2. But for now, their strength is undeniable and not so surprisingly, Beast Mastery makes it into our highest tier. Joining them, our next spec finding itself in our highest tier is Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest is the quintessential support class, and this is what's allowing them to thrive in the current meta. Shadow is one of the best casters at dealing with high burst damage, having a multitude of very strong defensives like Dispersion or Greater Fade, allowing them to survive almost any onslaught. This fact combined with their plethora of instant crowd control such as Psychic Horror, Silence, and Psychic Scream allows Shadow Priest able to slot in and make the perfect partner for almost any high damage melee or even range for that matter. On top of all that, Shadow now even has very high sustained instant damage, naturally coming from their damage over time effects combined with the new adaptation of going Necrolord for Unholy Transfusion and the Pallid Command Legendary. Just all around a super solid utility based ranged caster that really doesn't have any glaring weaknesses right now. That being said, you probably don't want to venture into 2v2 if that's the bracket you prefer. 
also finding itself in our S tier as the final addition and as the final spec on this tier list as a whole is Fire Mage. Fire Mage looked like it was in for a rough time at the start of the season, receiving nerfs to both Kindling and Infernal Cascade. But when something was as overtuned as Combustion Damage, it was barely even noticeable. Although they are a tad weaker in Season 2, Fire Mage fundamentally is just very strong. The combination of control coming from Dragon's Breath, Polymorph, Ring of Frost, and Nova, combined with their high instant damage, is just always going to allow Fire Mages to be one of the best ranged specs. Something which did help was the addition of Ring of Fire, as this now allows Fire to contribute more damage during setups outside of Combustion. Much like Beast Mastery though, Fire Mage is quite limited when it comes to composition options, but the compositions it does have, namely Rogue Mage, continue to be S tier. Okay then, to recap, on screen now you'll see all of our range specs and their tier rankings. Honestly, if you're looking to push this season and reach your rating goal, anything from A tier onwards is going to give you a good shot. But as always, every range on this list is playable to some extent. It all just depends on your goals. Make sure to let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you agree with our placing. And if you're yet to see our Melee version, be sure to check that out as well. For now though, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.